Welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to the fifth Wax Blockchain Meetup. Welcome Ross and welcome Dallas. It's a pleasure to have you both. Uh, today it's going to be a, an exciting event. Uh, Dallas, as you know, as many of you know, uh, is the co-founder of Karma app. And Karma was one of the earliest uh, projects to launch on uh, EOS. Uh, and then they recently migrated to Wax. Uh, Karma has a lot of features. It's available both on iOS and Android. Uh, now, I was uh, not using Karma before, but I signed up for it just to, just for this uh, in preparation for this uh, event. And the sign up is quite easy. Posting is quite easy as well. Uh, and uh, we are going to hear about Dallas, about how he's, how he started this, you know, what motivated him, and then we will uh, talk about uh, the Wax migration and also. Dallas is going to talk about the NFTs that uh, he's uh, uh, he's designing. Well, welcome, Dallas. Uh, hey, seven. Dallas, welcome. Yeah, thank thank you guys for having me on. I, uh, I appreciate it, and everybody who's also on the stream. Thank you guys for taking your time to be here. You could be doing anything, and you're here with us, so we really appreciate it. That Russ, are you able to see Dallas for some reason? I, I, want to he, see he, I see I see Dallas is like a little space invader. Yes, so we just Ooh. see the... <laughs> oh, it's... waiting for Dallas to reconnect. Oh, there we go. There we go. I can see you now. So, that that, good? Dallas, okay, cool. tell us about uh, yourself and how you started in the crypto space. Now, you were uh, doing some uh, a podcast before this, right? Before coming to EOS, and then you joined EOS and then started Karma, right? Yeah, so so initially, um, you know, I mean, my 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 journey in crypto goes back several years. Um, you know, I literally was just telling, you ever heard of Ethereum? And initially, people, you go, oh, what's that? Who knows, right? And uh, so initially, with that, I mean, it, it sent me down a path and I learned about the technology. And of course, I'm sure, like everybody on the call, the more you learn, you know, the the, the more you realize you need to learn, and the more excited you get about the entire thing. Um, so I, 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 you know. I'm running out of people to exhaust to be able to talk about all the things I thought were cool about the space. Um, I wanted to start a channel to share all that information with people, hoping that other people who weren't uh, maybe where I was at yet on the journey would get some value out of that. So initially started off sharing a lot of videos about, you know, sort of the general things people would talk about. Then I started covering projects uh, and then went, you know, even deeper just into, you know, ideas I had about sort of how the future of the space would shake out. Uh, interviewing some of the really, you know, some of the coolest people in the space on my channel. And, you know, uh, of course, you know, I think like most people, um, you know, you have a natural in inclination and want to think about, you know, how, how could I add value to the space? Maybe what ideas do I have? And so through going through that, talking to people, um, you know, it gave me a lot of ideas to think about, you know, what did I want to start? What kind of contribution did we want to add? Uh, oh. Excuse me, sorry, I muted for a sec. Um, and, and yeah, so it sent me down a path with that and uh, and it led to the idea of karma, you know, wanting to really add value uh, in that sector and social space. You know, I think it's so important. Um, social media, of course, I mean, people, you know, it's it's the majority uh, of, sadly, you know, of, of how people are interacting these days. I think it's gonna be, not sadly, but it's really becoming uh, a part of really how the future is shaping out for people. It's how we connect with people. It's how we meet people. It's how I met both of these guys who are here on the call with me as well. I think initially through, you know, through social channels. So I think it's so important, and I wanted to make a significant difference in that front um, because I felt like we had a few gatekeepers, you know, at the helm of it who really didn't have the best intentions of the majority of people. So wanted to add value, um, you know, in that in that aspect for you know for everybody who. Uh, you know who could benefit from it and then and obviously with blockchain gave us a really unique opportunity to you know do new things in it create a new business model that could drive value back to the actual users of the platform uh in a different way it's uh, it's excellent so initially you launched, you were one of the earliest projects right on us i think your airdrop was maybe the first or the second i forget yeah i think we were second i think uh i think horace pay snuck in and got the the first airdrop out there for those of you guys who've been here on the you know EOS community since day one who who know Horace Pay, uh, but we were very 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 early wanting to get the token out there for people and do it a very different way. You know, it was right after the ICO craze where everybody was you know having a very fancy website promising the world, asking people to give them their money in exchange for some tokens, uh, and we didn't want to go that route. We wanted to build a grassroots movement 
um, you know, for people who really understood what it was we were trying to do for the ground up. So we did the, the, we were the second airdrop that happened on EOS and we gave karma out for free to EOS holders uh, to have them be part of our community. Hey, so Dallas, for, so you, for, you, those, for those who don't know about karma, uh, Dallas, tell, tell us what it is. Yeah. Karma is social media yeah. for good, right? Yeah, so 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 initially, I mean, look, we, we definitely wanted to, right out of the gate, um, figure out a way for people to, you know, just be aware of how we're interacting with each other, right? And social media really was geared in a direction towards people, uh, you know, really, towards, you know, the platforms top down, really incentivizing, you know, how do we make people super addicted to these platforms where they're just consuming ads and arguing with each other and whatever else goes on. And, and these platforms are geared that way to get people to give their maximum attention and ideally, you know, passion, whether that be anger or excitement, because once you stay on the platform, it makes you consume ads. So right out of the gate, we wanted to create a platform that um, had, had a different value proposition. Of course, social media on its head, people are allowed to post what they want, how they want. In the beginning, we've been doing really great things both here in, in Colombia and in other countries as well, and people in the community doing grassroots things you know, in where they live. And we wanted to create an opportunity, number one at the gate, for people in social media to share um, value that they were adding into their community, uh, to share that with the karma community and receive value back for doing that. Since then, of course, listening to the community, we wanted to expand what kind of content people can post, whether that be photos, videos, and soon here on the web version, text posts, as well as even articles if you want to write those. Uh, and of course, we don't want to put a stranglehold uh, or a constraint on what people were allowed to post. Um, you know, people should be allowed to express content in the way that they want. Um, but of course, for us, we're doing, you know, we're aiming to A, use, you know, use funds that uh, you know, can be created through the platform to do good both in the world and then also give an opportunity for people to, to do those things and, and, and earn value for adding those things into the world. So Karma at its core is a social network that initially launched for mobile, um, both on iOS and Android, where people can come on, not have to worry about shadow banning, the unfair censorship, or the overlords kind of dictating and throttling who gets to be popular and who doesn't. Um, we wanted to create a very democratic system where, where the community can vote up the things that they liked, or you could spend your karma uh, to be able to have more people see what, uh, you know, what it is that, that you know, the, the content of the messaging that, that you want them to see in the world uh, across the platform. And so obviously we're excited with the web version coming out. That'll open up a whole range of, uh, of new things for the community and beyond and new people who will come on in the future in the platform. So, so tell us, what, you know, what was the original like demographic that you were uh, targeting for Karma? I mean, from my perspective, not a huge Karma user, but I, I did use it a little bit um, on the mobile um, version at the beginning. But it seemed yeah. to be more like a low income uh, uh, sort of uh, third world countries helping out people, more like a humanitarian type angle. That, that's how I perceived it. Um, is that just one of the two yeah boxes? i mean i i think that yeah i think that that's definitely one of the boxes but it's obviously uh, i think it's a, you know it's a significant box as well i think a lot of the people in the community um who've been there since the beginning who are inviting people on who are really active looking for good content we, we value those things right i think all of us who hold karma want to reward people for doing those awesome things whether it's giving our life that's for that the can earn karma from just just simply giving a like and tipping people now, yeah. I and mean, people can obviously tip people directly on the post. And and the secondary thing we added later was actually promoting other people's content. So if I see that somebody somewhere in the world posts, you know, uh, unique original content, doing something awesome or just something valuable, it could be it could be a meme. I mean, uh, you know, if you're laughing and it's you know adding to your value in your life and it's something funny, we we view that as good karma as well too, right? And I don't want to be the arbitrator of what is good karma and what isn't. I think that's for the people to decide. Of course. And people are going to have different definitions of that uniquely for themselves. Um, what you mentioned about the initial demographic, you know, I think that people, um, you know, EOS, I think initially attracted a lot of people who wanted to break free and have a different option from the system that they were born into. You know, I think so many of us are sort of, at least prior, we felt forced to participate within the, you know, the government and monetary systems in which we were born under. And we don't really have a choice where we're born uh, or into who we're born, right? And so, um, of course, it attracted a lot of those people because I think those people are, you know, they suffer the most from governments who take advantage of their currencies. Uh, and, and so those people, I think, were naturally attracted to karma because 
what other app really in the app store can you download that you can use just like a social network? And the first like you get, you're going to earn something that, that is a monetary mm -hmm. reward for. Um, and so I think it's a natural thing that people on all sort of pegs on the spectrum are attracted to. I, I just, uh, you saw my post, right, Dallas? No, mine is the top post there. <laughs> yes. I, I, so Ross, there is this feature called Boost in Karma. It's some, something similar to voice. I don't know if you, you are not on voice, right, Ross? It's still not no, in Australia. It's not yet, no. So, well, in voice, there's this uh, something very similar to Boost. You know, like in Karma, you boost the post by uh, giving some Karma tokens to the post. And then, like in voice, they have uh, yeah. the same, almost the same mechanism. So, uh, it, you thought about this before, Wise Dallas. That's great. It's a great. How did you come up with this uh, idea? Um, I mean, naturally, you know, my my evolution in in the space um, within EOS, within EOS IO blockchain. I mean, I think a lot of the things I was introduced to and educated on were, were from people like Dan Larimer, um, Brendan Bloomer, some of the you know some of these early minds that that really crafted some of this amazing technology. And so I was on Steam. Um, pretty, you know, somewhat early on and, you know, got some ideas from Steam, but I think um, obviously Steam, you know, the, a lot of that community has migrated over to Hive, but um, I think a lot of ideas were, you know, luckily enough for to be able to see, you know, experiments that happened before us and decide, you know, what what's actually a better yeah. benefit for people using it. And I think there's some flaws on Steam. I mean, you can like your own content, right? I mean, how... I don't know if that makes the most sense, right? I can like myself and give myself money. Um, you know, certain things like yeah. that we wanted to make different for our platform. And and there's no, you know, and there's no one size fits all. I'm not criticizing uh, any particular platform, but I think for us, seeing certain ideas like that gave us, a, you know, a starting point to build off of and make adjustments from. Um, and I think it just made natural sense right, right there on the post. If you can like a post, you can comment a post, places like Twitter, you can retweet it. Um, it made sense that you could directly you know, send, send the token, spend the token, and promote it for more people to see. I think it was a natural for us initially when we saw it prior to it was a natural thing that we thought made sense right there on the post to happen. Um, there's some there's some different things coming up for Karma, which are really exciting that I haven't seen, uh, you know, generally uh, the space, which is the idea of being able to spend per impression, right? Instead of sort of spending now where you can be, you know, can help your rank in the popular feed, um, we want to actually quantify it the same way that, you know, people who don't know about this stuff right now, who don't know about blockchain, who don't know about crypto, they, they, they're used to spending their funds to promote things on Facebook and Instagram where they're directly quantifying, you know, how many people are going to see this versus how much USD are we spending. And so we're creating something right now that's going to equate uh, impressions. So you'll be able to say, I want 5,000 impressions, 5,000 unique viewers to see this post. It'll cost me this much karma. And when someone spends that karma, that karma will get, you know, the majority of it will get burnt to offset any inflation that's from karma. And so most people don't know the inflation for karma is lower Bitcoin's inflation and, and even lower than EOS's inflation, um, factoring in uh, the additional burns that happen. And so I think that was a very important part to have like a sound structure there that factored Sounds in. Sounds fun. Because you have a lot of these early platforms where they just inflate like crazy. Yes. And you have very early people on you know, who, uh, you know, benefit a ton from inflation and then they're the majority holders because inflation really starts to curve down dramatically after that. And so for us, um, you know, wanting to factor in that, and of course, it's hard to predict these things ahead of time. Of course, nobody has the crystal ball, um, but wanting to try to make rules that were understandable and fair for, for people yeah. coming on at, whether they were early or late. Do you, do you see any competition in voice? I mean, you must I don't know what voice looks like, by the way, <laughs> but uh, from what Michael says, do you see that that could be a potential uh, um, competitor? Yeah, it's funny you ask that because Matt also asked that, Matt, like right at the same time. Um, <laughs> so I'm glad to answer sort of both. It's of Australian so, I mean, the, look, the way the yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, look, um, I think all social networks are competing to some extent and all apps really in the world. Everyone's competing for attention. Everyone's competing for how we create an environment or a platform for people to want to hang out, interact with other people, and do, you know, the, the other XYZ things that make this platform unique. So is Karma competing with voice to some extent for attention? Of course. Is Karma competing with YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, all these different things? Yes, for, for, for when it comes to attention. Um, I think voice is doing things... Uh, different ways. I mean, look, I mean, obviously to come on to voice, you have to give your face, you have to give your ID. 
uh, and all these additional things. And then even after that, we're still in a beta mode where the tokens you're earning aren't real. They're not, they're not actually worth anything. Um, I know there's a promise down the road that they might be, but obviously we're not there yet. Uh, so I think there's some major differences between the barriers to entry between coming on the Karma and coming on the Voice. I think Voice um, is filling a very unique and interesting spot in the market. Um, you know, I, I like just uh, similar to how LinkedIn did it. I mean, I'm not saying Voice is LinkedIn. Of course, they're very different. But LinkedIn, you know, has a very strict KYC aspect once you start to use certain things. And so for that particular reason in that particular area, um, I think it. I think it's interesting. Um, I think you know, to, to Joel's comment in the in the po in the uh, comment section here, I think there's a lot of people who don't want to give their government ID um, right to an app and hope that it doesn't get lost or sold off as third party data. I know Voice has made a pretty strong commitment to not wanting to do that, and I, you know, given the track record of the guys, I would imagine that they're not going to do that. Um, but I think that asking, you know, Delilah in Pennsylvania to give her ID into this app she's never seen is a hard ask to some extent to want to grow and reach uh, a large number of people. So, uh, and not to mention different features that we're going to have than voice. So everyone's competing for attention, but I think that we're different in a lot of ways. So tell us about uh, what made you shift to Vax, uh, Dallas? How did you choose Vax? No. I saw Matt ask that question as well. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah, that is. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, and if I look and if I look distracted, I am uh, I'm plugging up my charger. I, I realize I have an old battery on this computer that uh, dies often pretty pretty quick once uh, once I'm on a video. So I'm doing this at the same time. Um, how, sorry, how what was you your, your question, Vex? Michael? That is how to do with Vex. Yes. 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 Um, so so question. at the time, I mean, uh, late late last year, Q4. Yes. So, so Q4, I mean, there's, there's several reasons. Um, one of the prime reasons is at the time and, and still to some extent now is cost, right? I mean, we, Karma out of the gate, Karma was the first uh, app that I understood on EOS that was providing free accounts for people. And we were definitely the first app on EOS that was providing free, work, free resources when it came to CPU, net, and RAM for people. And that was something we really wanted to continue on uh, forever, regardless of, of you know, where we were at, if it was on EOS or a different EOS IO channel. I think it's vastly important. I think asking non-early uh, adopters in EOS to provide their own token to stake to CPU, to provide resources, I think is a very hard ask um, for average people. I think it's confusing. Uh, and, and it's not really a fair ask given the value propositions on current platforms where you don't have to do anything but give your email and a password and then you're in. Um, so, so the cost for us to provide free accounts started to get above a dollar for, you know, for every, every EOS account that we were adding on. And um, that was a hard, you know, hard thing to be able to keep up with the costs on when we're you know, wanting to do marketing to large numbers of people. And it would cost, if we signed up you know, 200 users in a day, it cost us $200. And that money was sunk. Um, and so I think, it, I think it was hard to quantify it in that perspective. Um, not to mention also, you know, IDOS launched around that point. And so it was extremely difficult. We really liked Wax Cloud Wallet. Um, I, I, some people know, some people don't, but I've, uh, I did the designs for the new Wax Cloud Wallet that's coming out pretty soon. I'm very excited right. about that. I think it's going to be cool. I hope, you know, I think, I think I hope people view it as, as like, you know, the, the best wallet in the space um, in terms of onboarding. I mean, you can onboard with an email and a password, you get a free account. You can sign up with Facebook, Google, any of these things people already have, and they have a free account. So really for the cost of providing free resources um, and free accounts, and of course, Wax already had, uh, you know, the plans for a worker proposal system, which was something we were so excited about uh, that EOS would have. Uh, and so we're excited that that's something that, can be potentially tapped into by us or other yeah. projects who are on Wax to you know build things that are going to add value to the platform. Ah, Did you sorry, you got I'm your sorry. you you got um, Karma through the worker proposal system on Wax, right? Uh, you, you submitted a request yes. for a worker uh, proposal. Yes. So yeah. we put. It yeah, there's a worker proposal Karma submitted. Um, we haven't put an announcement out yet because. It hasn't uh, been processed yet, but we're definitely going to put an announcement about that um, out to everybody. And so, no, it's okay. But, uh, but, but it was, yeah, it's to, um, for the web version for Karma, which um, I can show everybody uh, here. If we do a screen share, I'm happy to show everybody sort of the current state of the web version. I, I totally know everybody in our community is asking, when's it launching? When's it launching? Um, the only thing, so right now in the web version, um, most things working working really well, right? Which is which is great. Uh, Ninety nine percent of things, right? And you guys know 
if you build your own things, how, how that how that goes. Um, but um, we want to add Scatter as an option for people. Right now, the only option to sign in the web is with your phone number, which is a new feature we added because I think so many mainstream apps have phone number signed in. So we wanted to add that for people. Um, and but we we well, the one thing we realized we didn't have on the web version is obviously Scatter, so that people with their own private key, people like me and my own account, I'm using my own private key in Karma right now currently. Um, we need that to be done uh, to be able to launch the web version, of course, with MVP. Uh, let me do a little screen share here if that's cool with you guys. Uh, yeah. I'll show everybody. And of course, if you guys have other questions, please throw them my way. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Nice. So right here is the feed. I'm using uh, my friend Kenny, who's here with me in Colombia. I'm using his account to test it. So you've got all these posts here. You can quickly like. These are all on-chain transactions if you want to like all these awesome animal photos that animals in nature or, or animal worlds is posting. Um, you can obviously tip a post. This is totally adjustable to tip however you want. And you see the correlated USD value there. Um, you can go to the Discover page. And, uh, oops, give me one sec. You can go to the Discover page and see popular content. You can see new content as well. So you see, you guys see everything here. Um, you can go to activity to see the transactions that have happened. Oops, I clicked over from that. So here's the, here's the wallet. Um, we, we're adding support for wax inside the wallet. So you can see current price, amount, USD value. You can power up here in the wallet. You can claim. You can send tokens to anybody, whether it's here in your wallet or directly on their profile. And you can go into your own profile here. And we're going to be supporting text posts, like I said, as well, where people can post text-only content to really get their thoughts and ideas out there. Um, you can create a post here, like I said, whether it's photo, video, or image. You can, if you want to get the, you know, uh, much more of the actual feeds, you can close it view everything here in a much bigger form. Um, and there's a lot of other features that are gonna be coming to it. Um, I'm happy to go through, of course, those features with you guys, but there's you know a ton of things here that are now, Kenny doesn't follow too many people, so most of the posts here are from this one account, um, but but everything is uh, you know obviously very dynamic there, you guys can see. What's the size of the user base at the moment on, on Karma? Looks like we... Lost him. Lost Dallas. Let's see if he comes back on. Yes, he should be coming back. <laughs> yes, have you tried Karma, Russ? I, I used it on the on the mobile app. Like, I I, I didn't try before two I, years ago. I just recently signed up. You know, just getting ready for this event, and the sign up was very easy. It's uh, there is no. It's almost like the cloud wallet, although it's not the cloud wallet. It's uh, SMS based. And you just put in your phone number. And, yeah. Okay. And you just uh, log in through the mobile app. Uh, yeah. Posting is easy. Boosting the post is easy. My my post is the top one right now. I boosted with uh, <laughs> three point eight thousand karma there. <laughs> yeah. So the, yeah, that that feature was very much similar to you know, in voice, you know, where you why is supposed to it goes on the top that's uh, it's uh, Dallas had figured this out before why so that's that's great so well my, my question my question was like how many people are actually using karma at the moment yeah did it have I, any indication of that? I, I know that it's quite quite a big number because I had to invite each time so I think here here is sorry okay. guys yeah, there we go yeah I think the old, uh, <laughs> ending, ending the screen share didn't uh quite bring me back oh, here, well. as we would have no. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was asking what's the size of the user base at the moment yeah so so like I said uh, the, the number of accounts on the platform is near um, between 40 and 50 thousand the daily active users um, is anywhere between several hundred and three thousand or so um, to be honest with I you mean, guys that's pretty like, good man yeah and 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 so for us I mean to want to be able to do the kind of marketing that we want um, to, you know, to, to onboard the kind of people that we want and to, and to more importantly, have them stay once they come, which is the most important aspect. Um, we're really excited about the web version launching because this will have, you know, all the features and all the, we think the usability and be as quick, you know, as people are expecting with existing platforms. And so we expect these numbers to go 
up quite a bit. Um, there's a lot of influencers that we're working with, both you know YouTubers and Instagrammers who have you know more more I'd say more engaged followers than any app in any blockchain app you can think of times ten um, that we're excited to want to bring on. Um, but um, the worst thing you can do, I think, is is rush those people in before the product is where it should be. Um, and we're very, very close to having that be where it should be. And I think people will be excited about those who uh, start to work with Karma and, and and show that they're on it and share it with their audiences outside of Karma to bring them on. Mm-hmm. I totally have to give it a go. It's been it's been ages since I tried it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Competing, like competing for my attention. <laughs> yes, and 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 of course, like I mentioned, yeah. I mean, everything. Everyone's competing for everyone's attention, even this crowdcast. And I'm happy we have a. Uh, you know, all, all 30 of us on or 31 of us on here. Um, so with um, w- one of the things I think that is maybe worth discussing, it may have been one of your guys' next questions, but is how, you know, some of the future features that are coming. There's several things, yeah. um, but one of the big things is NFTs. And that was another reason why we were really excited about Wax. Um, so I've been working with the Atomic Asset team to design their site that's coming for the uh you know the nft digital asset marketplace i think that's gonna be a really really exciting place for people to discover buy sell trade assets uh that exist on wax and of course the wax blockchain you know is really designed for digital assets to do uh to you know to be able to create them easy and do all the cool things you want to do with them um one of the cool things that i think a lot of people may not be super aware of with the atomic asset standard is a lot of the abilities you have to be able to add within assets. So that's one of the things we're most excited about. So within Karma, we're, we're creating assets that, when held, sort of give you superpowers on the platform. So they may give you uh, a free amount of impressions you can boost to each day for free just by holding the asset. Or they may grant you uh, a multiplier on your current stake weight or they may give you a certain amount of karma power when you're holding them. So we really, uh, really, really like the the idea of yeah, integrating so digital great. assets that people can hold within the platform. Uh, and, and even cooler, we're gonna make them very scarce. And the other aspect, which is really cool, is you can lock tokens into the item, right? So we can lock a million karma into an item, and the only way you can get that karma out is to destroy the item, thus making that attribute it has more rare for everybody else who holds it. Uh, yeah. So we're really excited about the possibility of that and making that really simple for people. It's like Final Fantasy VII, man. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> tell, us, exactly. tell us about how, uh, what's the plan for the NFTs that you want to give today? And, you, you're, and you're also going to show us these NFTs, right? Yes. So there's several um, uh, we can show everybody. This will be the first time we're showing anybody so uh so don't share i'm just kidding but um so we'll we'll share it with don't everybody show me. Here. don't show me <laughs> don't show yeah <laughs> no so so we're gonna give away a couple for free here um which is one of the cool ones that we an artist we're working with um ha- has made a really cool nft um but let me do hopefully i don't lose you guys after the screen share but uh let me do the screen share i'll show you guys even the game that we're working on. But, but first, I'm going to show you guys the NFT that we are going to give away for free to everybody. So this is the Angry Mummy, hence the color and the mummy here. And, and as you guys notice, of course, uh, inspired by the Karma designs. Uh, and if for some reason you can't see uh, anything, please uh, interrupt me, of course. Can you guys see this? Yes, yes. 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 So I want to show you guys. So we're working on creating a game right now. We're actually partnering with the team who created Wax Tycoon. For those of you guys who have uh, seen and played that game, but uh, let me, yes. So let me show you guys uh, here, right? So inside of this, looking at this, this is a game called Circle of Life. You have different characters you can unlock here. And this is the the piggy bank, the mega monster. You got uh, the mermaid, the angry mummy, Tutan Karma, if you guys are uh, appreciating the the uh, the creativity with the names uh you got the princess or the queen here you got the king and the astro dude so you can actually go into one of these and you have different attributes that you need to increase per the character right you may increase their harmony their balance their energy or the piece that they have uh from here you can click into a leaderboard and see people here and 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 it follows a there's certain you know similarities between wax tycoon but basically if you can make it to the top you would reach what we call enlightenment and you can earn karma for doing so 
when you do that, you would destroy that progress, giving other people a chance to earn a reward, which is really cool. Uh, and then there's also uh, the, the ability to go swap right away for karma to wax, wax to karma, karma to other tokens. There's upgrades people can add to sort of enhance their journey in here as well. And this is a, a cool game that we're making sort of, like I said, yeah. as a part of the whole thing. Um, we're really excited. And this is just a snapshot of some of the characters to come. Uh, but we're really excited about how, how some of these look. And this game is already being developed right now. And we'll be ready pretty soon uh, in line with the release of, uh, of the web version for everybody watching. Yeah, that is so awesome. I'm, I'll totally play that. And I know Shelly will play it as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> looks, looks, looks very nice. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I like it. So, I'm reading the comments so, here. Mummif Mummified Karma. You can see it looks good. NFT art looks. Thanks, Shane. Um, yeah, cool. Cool. Sorry to. <laughs> I'm, I'm too used to doing the solo live stream where I'm talking to myself, guys, if you can't tell. <laughs> Um, so how are we going? To, so you've got three NFTs that you're going to be giving away today. How are we going to go about giving those away? Um, you know, I think I think engagement always uh, all, all, always brings it in. So whoever asks, you know, maybe the best questions. I think here the that's next a good idea. Minutes, maybe we can decide on who the winners are based on that. I see a, a couple people from our community: Jesse, uh, Michael, Wen Moon coming soon enough we're waiting for the full moon you know of course we uh it's either that or the uh the the solar eclipse either either way um it's inevitable <laughs> uh, I've got a, I've got... i was watching you know one of your older videos you made a video about medellin right you know, there yes. was a video about uh, why you went to medellin and i thought, I thought it was very interesting it would maybe you know, people would like to hear you're originally from los angeles right yes Born and raised in Los Angeles. To tell us how you went to Medellin. <laughs> um, so, so back before you know, I, I started to make content uh, within the blockchain crypto space. Um, I had a marketing, social media marketing business that I would help. Uh, I, I worked on some really big podcasts that people may know. People are familiar with a guy named Jim Quick, his podcast, and then other people just creating websites, uh, social content, helping people with growth, um, you know, ads and that kind of thing. And, um, and so uh, that gave me the freedom to not necessarily be stuck in a particular location or city, which, you know, I think a lot of us um, are, are able to do that to, to some extent, which is great. And so for that, um, I've always wanted to travel. I went to Europe initially with some friends and then a, a really good friend of mine who's here with me right now named Kenny. Him and I came to, um, came to Medellin uh, on a trip and we really loved it. Um, Medellin is an amazing place. I think so many people's perception of it, of course, is narcos and or the bad stories that became very popular. Uh, but of course, in a 24 hour news cycle, you've got to get all, you know, all the bad things filtered to the top. And so people very rarely see the good things of places that they haven't been. Um, and so we came here and really loved it. Um, Medellin is an amazing place. I mean, Medellin has Hawaii weather 24 seven. Um, Amazing people. I mean, the, the 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 Westerners that you meet here are always doing really cool things because this is, you know, probably the tenth country that they've been to or more. So they they're pretty well traveled, doing cool stuff, and the food is great. The people are great. The culture is really awesome, and I just fell in love with it. To be honest with you guys, and really enjoyed it, and uh, has spent most of the last two years here. Um, really, you know, really enjoying the city of Medellin quite a bit and the country of Colombia uh, even more. Yeah, I saw that video about uh, your apartment. I think you made a video in your apartment, right? Yeah, I'll be doing one soon. I'm moving apartments. Uh, obviously, the quarantines made it hard to move apartments because, you know, everybody's on lo on lookout for anybody leaving their home. Uh, which, you know, we maybe that'll be another podcast we'll go we'll go into together. Whether you know how we all think about that, but um, you know, but but I'm going to be moving to a new apartment uh, very you know quickly here soon. So I'll give another tour for everybody who wants to see it. Uh, and it's amazing. You you can get such amazing places here um, for pennies on the dollar compared to what you can get in the U.S. And there's no sacrifice in your quality of life. If, if anything, it's even better, uh, which is which is really cool. Um, I want to address a couple of questions in the chat here, if that's cool with you guys. Yeah, great. Um, so can karma be traded on Coinbase? Yes. Uh, but that, of course, that's up to Coinbase to want to do that. They're uh, you know a centralized entity who controls a centralized app. 
So they would need to want to add it. There's only obviously a handful of projects on Coinbase. Sadly, some of them are, of course, some really great projects and some of them are projects that they're in business with. And so they're going to get preferential treatment over others. That's a, uh, a secret many people probably won't tell you, but that's just the way it goes. Um, will Karma always be on wax? Um, I think the real beauty of EOSIO with some of the technology that Liquid Apps has been making and other chains have been creating on EOS is that you're going to have uh, you're going to have the ability to sort of move wherever you want. And I think that, that um, for people to understand, you know, the real beauty of EOS IO uh, is that you're, you're not particularly stuck in one arena, right? I mean, people will ideally have the ability as EOS IO grows in the whole ecosystem to be on the chain you want to be, whether the project you're on even wants to be on that chain. Um, so long term, long, super long term, I think Karma will be usable across all EOS IO chains. Uh, in the short to midterm, I think there are, you know, I think there's a lot of reasons to be on WAX that make a whole lot of sense. Um, but of course, you know, for people who say about, you know, the trading pairs and things like that, I mean, there's EOS trading pairs, people can get Karma. So you can buy or sell Karma with EOS right now as well, if people so choose. And that's the real thing people are worried about whenever you move a chain. But that option's still there for people. Uh, no use on new, no use new decks. New decks, the Karma Wax pair is on new decks right now. So for anybody who wants, they can click EOS side, go to any of the side chains, view all the tokens that trade on Wax, and Karma's there. Uh, Jesse asks, would you sell Karma for big money? Um, so the idea of selling Karma, right? We have to like break that down into different layers because what does that mean? Does that mean the actual website, or does that mean the actual control of the smart contracts and you know uh for for us i mean we want to you know and you have this ability with the osio to be able to lock keys or an instance to to i'm sorry to create a private key that nobody knows and lock the contract um that's what we want to do right because you want to not be viable by facebook because inevitably as you have success as a social network you get offers from facebook some of these other platforms and they do one of two things they either fit you into their mold or they make you obsolete like they did with Vine. And we don't want that to even be an option um, for people who know, like, and trust Karma. So the idea is to make the contract and ideally longer term, the actual domain um, unviable. And that's the, that's the real goal. So that's the, I think the commitment that we're, um, that we're committed to wanting to do uh, with, with the community. I hope, I hope that makes sense. Um, and going forward, can you tip in Fiat and Karma? Uh, I mean, that's an idea that, that could definitely be added to be able to tip in fiat uh, if people so choose. Obviously, it's probably easier to integrate uh, something like maybe Tether versus fiat because that, you know, that, that just uh, opens you up to a whole slew of uh, compliance issues that are really disguised as, you know, big apps creating fake, comp you know, fake rules to prevent competition. And so obviously those kind of things we want to try to avoid as much as possible. Um, it's Karma open source. So the actual code for the, the, the token, this exact moment, uh, is open source. The act, all the code for the particular app is not in this exact moment. Um, and, you know, I think for that, I think, you know, um, people can understand why to some extent, you know, I mean, open source can mean a number of different things. It can mean open collaborators coming on. It can also mean very quickly those with more money and more resources can steal all the hard, you know the code that everyone's put in, make it their own thing and give no credit. So that, that's sort of the, the downside to some extent of open source, but open source, of course, long-term is an inevitable thing. Uh, I think most projects will be on. Will Karma become a DAC? Um, I, I think that's been the goal from early on to make Karma a DAC, absolutely, to where token holders can vote for things like features, and, and all these different things. And of course, part of the roadmap, I think, is to have community moderation um, where community members can view reported posts or posts that maybe fit in certain categories and give their two cents on those posts so that the community you know, has the final say um, on every particular post. Right now, I mean, the only things that are being um, pulled out of view from Carmel, but of course are being still recorded on chain, are things that would violate the App Store terms and services. And that's only obviously for the app to be able to remain in the app store and that's sort of a constraint but which is the reason why we wanted to get the web version out there because uh that you know there's no app store to shut down the web version which is which is great but if you want to say in the app store you can't allow and nor do i think anybody wants to see um you know 
some of the really, really bad things without going into what those things are that people may post on a user generated content platform. Um, but nobody's being censored for political views. There's all some of you guys who are on here. I don't agree with your political views. They suck. But that's not my decision or anybody's <laughs> to be able to uh, to pull those things off. That doesn't seem fair. Yeah. Uh, I am uh, I am of the belief that uh, sunlight is the best disinfectant. And if we disagree, we should have a conversation about it. Nobody gets to be the final arbitrator in in the in the shadows yeah. over who says what. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No deep platform. <laughs> Yeah, Dallas, I saw. I heard somewhere that you had some plans for advertisers to display their post more prominently, right? Is it is it similar to boosting, or is it say different plan? No. So, so the the sort of boost per impression um, feature that's being that's being built right now, um, in a sense, at least initial ideas. And of course, if anybody has a better idea, listening on here, I, I don't care. I, uh, nobody, I think, who's working on it cares. I think we just want the best ideas. Um, but the idea, at least in its current state, is so that you know you you have a certain space that occupies ad space, right? And I think the best way to do that is native advertising, where it's sort of blended into the feed. You don't want some fat ad at the top or something over on the side that's like these are ads. Look at these, right? I, I'm really not a big fan of that. Um, I think the best way to do it is organic posts that are being promoted, and so the idea is to have them fit maybe every five to seven posts within the feed, and people are paying for those impressions, and so. The real, the real beauty of having karma there, the token as the, you know, the mediary monetary unit, is that it, it, it aligns everyone's values together. So when you see an ad, instead of you seeing an ad on Facebook and going, cool, Facebook stealing my time and keeping all the money, in this particular case, that person's spending the same you know, monetary unit you earn, which is karma, to be able to buy your time to see it, you know, to see it, and then they're destroying that karma, burning it, making the supply more scarce. So even for you as a viewer of that ad, uh, you're benefiting indirectly from you know the token spent on on those impressions to be seen. Very cool. So, what's your uh, future plans, uh, Dallas? So, what's your goal for the if you go if you like fast forward a couple of years? What's the user base you want to hit? You know, like you have some hard metrics, or you just want to things to um, go. Yeah, I mean, I think a couple of years out, I mean, I think we definitely want Karma to be at, you know, nine figure user base and beyond. Um, so that would be 100 million users or more uh, and be something that 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 can't be stopped. Right. Something that, you know, uh, I can't be stopped in a, you know, in a coffee shop by a guy in a suit and says, hey, uh, so we, we, we've been you know, we've been looking at your photos and we need you to, uh, you know, start censoring these people or else we're going to do this to you. Right. And I think. Uh, maybe that sounds conspiracy. Maybe it doesn't for certain people listening. But I think that when you we see decisions made by a lot of these existing platforms, you have to wonder why, right? And a lot of these decisions either stem from monetary, you know, uh, gains that they're going to make. But you think people on some of these biggest platforms, they have all the money in the world. They have more money than they could ever need. So a lot of it becomes from exterior pressures put on them to make decisions that they maybe do or don't agree with. And so we want that to be not even a decision that can be made, right? So that. Uh, it's unstoppable. So we want to, you know, a nine-figure user base of people, you know, posting amazing content, people being rewarded for that content directly, um, and you know, something that's unstoppable. And longer term, you know, we really an idea that we're flirting with, you know, being on Wax is to allow um, artists or creators to be able to tokenize all their content, right? So if you want to, as an artist, you know, roll out your art to people and say, hey, these are you know, one of 10 that exist. This is my original art in a digital form. We want to give people the opportunity to do that. We've even flirted with the idea of a, a paid live stream. So you can maybe hop on and go to, a, you know, maybe a yoga class for 10 cents, something that's going to add value to you. It's a fraction of the cost. It would be for you to go do it in real life. But it, but the, but the, uh, the teacher teaching the class would make many multiples above what they teach uh, by offering it to thousands of people all at the same time on our platform. So we think really cool things like that can be integrated into a social network um, as these things expand you know, more and more. Uh, Dallas, one question. Who is yeah. um, Karma, us? Like you keep saying us as in your team. Like it, yeah. who, how many people are part of the team? Who, are yeah. there any other names that we would know as a community? Yeah, so so obviously we have you know, we have ambassadors in the community. I want to mention those people first, um, as well as you know sort of community leaders. You know, people like Shane, people like Jesse do a really great job. A lot of people who are here in the chat, 
Um, but beyond that, the actual team working on you know, let's say code updates, design, marketing, all those kind of things. You have people like myself, um, Matt, who's also here in Columbia with me as well. Uh, Dimitri, who's here on the call. Dimitri does a really amazing job making sure that Karma's up and running 24-7. Uh, we have, funny enough, another Dimitri who's doing a really great job on front-end work. Uh, Nathan Rempel has done a lot of the best thing, you know, a lot of, a lot of features within our smart contracts. Um, and there's been, a, you know, all the people who've con uh, who aren't necessarily maybe on the website or on like what we consider like the team, but they've had really meaningful contribution um, to Karma. And of course, you know, we're looking to you know always expand that. Who could add value, uh, you know, into the areas in which Karma. Yeah. Awesome. So tell us, tell us about the project that you're excited about, other than Karma. Something, um, something that's uh, that uh, that you think has a great potential. Yeah. Oh. Oh, I can't hear. Uh, what coin? What coin? Where's it? What's the symbol? Um, <laughs> Um, so, so I mean, of course, I, I think Wax is something that we're really excited about. I mean, Wax has some very amazing partnerships and products that are going to be coming out with with people that people are very familiar with. Um, that I think anybody would be excited about um, when, whenever they see. So that's that's one major thing for us. Um, but obviously, Bounty Block. I'll, I'll give Dimitri the shout out. Even though Bounty Block doesn't have a token, people can hop on. Bounty Block is a way for people to integrate. Uh, gamification directly into their apps um, to create challenges and reputation systems and all this just super easy integrating that into their app which is amazing that hadn't existed before Bounty Block. Um, I think Chainlink is a really cool project uh, trying to bring and merge you know integrity into off-chain data into on-chain contracts that's something for Karma we've wanted to flirt with the idea of integrating of uh, which is um, factoring in the number of unique impressions and views that content gets and then factoring that into the rewards that that particular piece of content gets and there's no real way to do that um, prior to Chainlink and then other projects like Liquid App who are working on somewhat similar problems to be able to feed in that data um, and not have you just take my word for it that we're doing it the right way, but actually have it be verifiably done on chain. Um, those are a few projects I'm really excited about. I think, to be honest, I think Bi Binance Coin is a very cool project. I mean, Binance is an absolute rocket that factors in real world economics into how their token works, and, and that being stock buybacks with what they do with buying back the token with revenue and burning it. Um, I'm a big fan of like real world things that have proven to work for a really long time, actually, you know, and then translating those those concepts uh, into uh, blockchain based projects. So those are a few that I'm really excited about. There's obviously more, of course, but those are a few. Excellent. Well, uh, thank you, Dallas. Uh, let me bring in uh, Matt, right? He's, Matt is going to show us about this cloud cloud wallet, right? Russ? Yeah, so 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 Dallas, we're going to get Matt from the Eosphere team just to show the people on the call how easy it is to create a, a Wax Cloud wallet account. Um, yes, and is Matt to go on the, on the yeah, cloud? Yeah, he is. Um, oh, there he is. Yes. So let me let me invite Matt. And this is probably the moment that you say, Dallas, and are we redesigning it? And it's coming out next week. I know. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I'm happy uh, I can do a screen share show. Uh, the team has put some design for the community to speed on, which uh, we've obviously taken into account and listened to how we've shifted uh, some changes. But if you got, you know, if you want to uh, have me send over some of the designs from and web, happy to share it with you guys. Uh, you actually broke up with me the last few seconds. You were going to, you said happy to share. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like I said, we can share uh, the new designs of both mobile and web for cloud wallet if everyone wants to know. Corona uh, we're we're still corona negative for anyone wondering. <laughs> hey Matt. Hey guys, can you hear me? Test in. Yeah, we can hear you fine. Are you hey, sitting man. outside? <clears throat> yeah, mate. It's um beautiful day here in Sydney. It's about twenty six degrees already this morning. So it's um <clears throat> I thought you know, we're all in quarantine at the moment, so why not get out in the fresh outdoors? Quarantine. 
it looks like for us we they extended one more month for us here in illinois yeah right yeah nice um oh we're, we're not exactly quarantined <laughs> down with guns and stuff outside but um yeah i just uh like to get the fresh air when we can hey, nice, bro. nice to uh nice to see everyone dallas hey michael <laughs> Nice. Well, uh, t t show us uh, how to how to do this cloud wallet, Matt. Let's yeah, I'm see. just um, I'm just gonna test the share the screen here. Oh, I think we can only have four screens. So let me. I may have to. Uh, you can drop me off, Mark. Okay. Let, let, I'm going to invite Ras back in a minute. Yes. Now you can have this. Matt. Yeah, I'll just click the share. Cool. All right um so yeah it's pretty it's, it's a like uh ross was saying it's a very simple simple process um we can we can drop the the link up here in the telegram group uh for those people that that don't have the link um but for this uh use i've just gone and created just a, a dummy kind of like a set up a dummy uh email account and stuff that we can use just to go through the process um so yeah guys you just simply come to the allaccess.wax.io uh, website, uh, in, input your email address. There's also other options here, Facebook, Google. Um, they've done a really good job in, in allowing access for all different types of platforms. Um, for this one, I'm going to just uh, use, a, use an email. Uh, so I'll just put the email address in. So you go through the process, guys. You put in your, um, yeah, you put in your, email address password um, and then you'll be prompted to come into the to the wax like this um, obviously it's going to look a little bit different um, <clears throat> just because mine's obviously you know wax tycoon which is what um, dallas mentioned before one of the games on there which i've been playing as well um, and then once you're in here as well you can um, obviously go into the account settings and set up set up your uh, account security as well if you wanted the 2fa um which is which is highly recommended so obviously um, enable that um and then you can set that up as well um i guess uh dallas you're still on here aren't you dallas, yeah he's still on yeah so i i did have a i did have a so because when you're in here guys you can obviously this will be um well mine zero anyway but um you can very very easy process to set up as as you can see guys but once you're in here you obviously get given that's your um uh, your wax account here so if you were to go to the blocks.io uh website um you could search um and you'd be able to, to it's already set up with resources um so you can start sending and receiving um wax as well so um to to put wax um into your wallet you could use it uh, send wax from an, an exchange into here by using by using your account name as well. Um, also, when you come down, you can look at your, your NFTs um, that you've got as well. I'm not actually sure how I got this one, but it seems to be sitting there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then um, if um, Dallas was on, I was going to ask him as well. So you can add you can add other tokens. Um, are you still there, Dallas? That, that that should be still on i oh, invite him know. onto the screen yeah so um he might be away from the computer but yeah you can you can go through and you can add um certain tokens um to your wallet um and then once you've added them um back on the home page you can actually via the wallet here you can um visit visit those dApps as well so if we go to the tycoon um obviously you get sent directly to the um to the DAP as well. So um, yeah, it's a very, very, very easy process, guys. Um, go to the to the main website, you enter in your, if you wanted to use email and password, create that. You'll most, you'll also get sent, um, I had this ready as well, but you'll get sent a, um, you'll get sent a, a verification email uh, to your email, just go in there, activate, click that, um, just to confirm that you're, that you're not a robot. Um, and then from there, you'll have access um, into the cloud wallet. Um, very, very simple. Uh, Ross, did you have anything else to add that you seem to use the wallet for as well? Yeah, I, I used it once, Matt. And now we cannot, these keys, we cannot change, right? 
I, I think if you you can look up on on blocks this that five that's your that's your uh, account on blocks right this, yeah 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 you can look up on the blocks and yeah so these keys uh, these are stored where are these keys stored the private keys is it on the is it stored in the cloud or on the client side or in the cloud I believe is that correct Ross. Because I, I could, well, Ross is not on the screen. Oh, Ross, is, Ross is gone. No, no, no. Um, yeah. We had to, in, we need a space for the screen. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so from my understanding, yeah, it's, it's stored on the cloud. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going to give this just another go because I, I believe I've worked out. Um, the problem here it's uh, very easy to sign up i think uh, if any of you are here if you don't have an account please do sign up it should it won't take more than a couple yeah of yeah so i just inputted it then uh it says for me to check my email um i've been been sent an email here activate your account obviously you just uh, re-enter that stuff uh, wow. Okay, this should be fine now. Now, now you prevent, prevent spam, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. it's, 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 sometimes it can be frustrating. Yeah, because. Ah, uh, don't know what's going on. It, it, but it works. Anyway, we saw on my on my example, my cloud before. Um, yeah, it's very, very simple, very simple process. Um, yeah, and then once you're in there, obviously you can, um, yeah, access everything via the cloud as well. Excellent. So let me invite Ross and Dallas back. Let's see. Okay, so I invited both. I'm smiling, man, because <laughs> every single time I tell you, please point all the bridges. It's there, there, there. But I can see a bridge in the back there. No, you put that wrong. That wasn't the bridge. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know what's going on. It must be this. Uh, it, it, it's, it's the demo guards, man. It's the demo guards. I think it's fine. It doesn't. This really is such a simple process. It's quite intuitive for anybody when they when they go into actually creating the an account. And Dallas has obviously taken a whole lot of notes to give to everybody for the Wax Cloud Wallet version to release next week. They're going to be removing capture. <laughs> so, so Dallas, how how are we going to? If so, we will leave it up to you to decide the winners of the NFT. The, Oh, uh, wait, he can't unmute. Dallas, I think you're on mute, I think. He says he can't unmute. Can't unmute? Okay. Do you, do you want to log out and log back in? Or? Okay. Let's, let's wait for Dallas. So how, how are things going, Russ, in... Uh, in Perth, is the um, is your quarantine getting over soon or uh, quarantine is has been relaxed to a degree we allowed gatherings of 10 people um but we in, in western australia we never had a complete lock up everyone stay in your house you were allowed to travel within your region which is about 100 kilometers around um there's only two and a half million people i believe in western australia so we're quite uh, separate from everybody so they didn't stop people going from the beach to the beaches you know you know if you went to the beach there's a 10 20 minutes meter space around you anyway so 
and we haven't had any new cases for the last few weeks so it's all looking good um hopefully uh, everybody can go back to you know working in restaurants and theaters and get the hospitality industry booted booted again because geez it hasn't been fantastic for the economy anywhere in the world eh? all these people staying at home and not earning any cash so uh, yeah i'm i am cautiously optimistic uh, about where we're going um, over the next month is things are getting better here but we we they extended the lockdown for one more month for us the so. <laughs> dallas you're back back the whole oh. time i've been here the whole time uh, had some technical but we're all right <laughs> um so what what, uh, what should we do? I had the I mean I don't know if you guys want to see I know several screens but the the new some of the new wax screens I could probably show um if you guys wanted to see those Oh I think uh, that'll be cool I mean it's quite relevant even if we just quickly look at it hey Mike Just yeah, have a look yeah. at the at the new wax cloud wallet screenshots Yeah let's check them out Uh what I'm clicking share screen it says there's no more seats left in the event what? Okay just stop just stop me Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there you go. Um, that is All right. Here you go. Uh cool. Let me let me do this real quick. Guys. I'll show you guys. So the whole whole build out here for anybody else know kind of what this looks like early on if you're designing something. Um but can you see this? Uh yeah. Can you guys see this? Yeah. Okay. So this so just keep in mind, this may change uh, in the colors. I think we're going to be adding in, like, you know, options for people to be able to choose the color that they want, which is cool. Um, but to enter, you know, you log in if you didn't, did or didn't have an account, uh, you can do the same thing, social login, email us, no problem. Uh, put in your 2FA, and then you're in, right? So here um, you have everything kind of at, you know, just a click away, right? whether you want to send, receive, See your readers get more wax. You have uh, your dashboard here, apps, inventory, taking rewards, learn more, you create new accounts. You have your tokens and NFTs here, so you can click uh, manage. Assets. You can on off here. All this apps that on wax and all these, you know, you just authenticate, use with your existing account. Um, which is really cool. This is one of the things we, I, I think, I personally liked the most about WAC was just how easy they really wanted to make it for you know outside of the space to be able to you know hop on and uh, you know learn how this all works. Um, if you go to inventory, you can the NFT option. You can burn the NFT, the tokens. That yeah, there are. Um, you can go to NFT Creator, create one here, which is really cool. Um, and again, keep in mind this all—all all this stuff could change, of course, in time. Because, but this is being built right now. Um, yeah, so you have cool. staking rewards, which is great here. You can see your stake amounts, the estimated earnings per day from staking rewards. You can vote for BPs using uh, proxies or however you like. Claim earnings. Uh, there might most likely be a learn section where you can go on. You know, play a video and learn about crypto. If you uh, or you know certain aspects, of it, maybe even other projects that exist on Wax. If you want to send to yourself. You can click here, receive and send to yourself. You can send tokens, pick the token you want, um, the amount, uh, whether by USD or Wax, of course. Um, send who you want to, you know, who you want to send to, and then your confirmation once you send it. And yeah, voila. Um, and of course, you know, you can see your resources for those who see that, but really the goal is to just have everything be super, super simple, all in one, so people can see everything, um, you know, sort of all at a snapshot, all in the same place. Yeah, the UI looks, um, looks awesome. It's very, very, elegant. yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks. I, I, I think, um, team, you know, everybody working on it's really excited. Um, just about what's possible with it. I mean, there's, you know, in the States, you know, you want to make a project that works really good, 
and ideally it's really good as well. And, and obviously very projects really get both right. Mm -hmm. um, I think while well, well, it works really well right now in its current state, it works great. You can sign into all these apps, you know, that, you know, different, different, uh, different, you know, tools and apps you can use with it. But, uh, but I think it can use a big upgrade in terms of features and how it looks. And I think, uh, It'll be a, a really great thing once it's live. And it's I've, I've seen some, you know, how it's looking right now. It's, it's very close. I mean, it's, it's getting close to already being, um, you know, uh, re releasable, I think, you know, without some of the final touches being done. It's exciting how quick uh, it's progressing. Hey, when is the wallet going to be able to work on, uh, on a mobile phone? I mean, there's some issues with um, iOS, right, in the way that cross conversations between apps is not something that's allowed, right? I mean, I, I don't know too much about are it. You saying, are you saying like specifically using a wallet with a, yeah. an actual app? Yeah. Um, shoot. Yeah, I just know. I give you an answer. I, I, could, I could get you an answer on that pretty quick. Uh, it's, just, it's just a topic of conversation. It's not like I'm specifically looking for it. But I know that guys that I've worked with in the past, that, that's why a lot of the, the games that originally came out on mobile, you had to actually put your private key into the game because there wasn't a mechanism for you to um, have a uh, connection with another wallet within the, the the framework of how iOS works, right? So I understand, you know, I don't know the deeds, but yeah. Uh, um, oh, I think you vanished there. Excellent. So D Dallas, are you going to announce the winners of the NFTs? Did we I think we might have lost them again. Okay. I was just think that that um that user face is uh, very important, I guess, for ability for new users. Um, I think having that new kind of style layout for uh, new users is going to be very attractive, rather than using the older kind of version. I think it'll be it's going to lure in a lot more users. I think. Yeah. Ease of use, you know, 100%. yeah. I think that's the most important thing with anything is that people will only use it if they know how to use it. Yeah. All right, Michael, um, I don't know, is Dallas coming back? Maybe we can just get him to, uh, we can't hear you, Dallas. Uh, uh, maybe we can just get Dallas to uh, put his choices in the chat. In later the, on. chat, in the chat. Yeah, I think we we have passed an hour, so yeah. Looks like we lost Dallas. Uh, is oh, or is he back? I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't look like. Okay, I, I guess we will uh, we will post the winners on the on the chat soon once Dallas is back. Uh, yeah. Let's see if he's here or he's not here. Yeah, maybe it's bad bad connection probably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. uh, we, we, th we thank Dallas for taking the time to join us. And thank you, Matt. Thank you, Ross. It's a pleasure always. Thanks, Dallas, Matt, Mark. Nice to meet you guys. And hopefully we'll have, a, we'll have a great program next, next month. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.